Um, speaking of dicks, though, I want to say, speaking of dicks, I want to thank John Fell in Baltimore. <laughs> Don't say that. He's uh, not a <laughs> Don't even... Now, see, he could have taken that as a compliment. He could have taken that, me saying that, as he possesses one of the largest phallic organs in all of the city of Baltimore, or even the state of Maryland. And then you just immediately blew that out of the water and practically accused him of shrinkage. You didn't say John Fell is a big dick. You said John Fell's a dick. Well, I just said speaking of dicks, I want to thank. Not speaking John of big dicks. He could have been a dick. He could have been a private could've detective. Been. He could have been a contender. He could have been. But you didn't Stella. say that. <laughs> Look at here. He could have been the private detective over to Grand Hotel. You know, those private dicks. But anyway. Instead, he sent me a birthday present, which I neglected to mention on the last program that we did, uh, which was a program from his native city of Baltimore from 1958, featuring the Graham brothers in the main event, Jerry and Eddie, against Larry and Joe Hamilton. Wow. Piece of history there. And Is that a heel versus heel match? It, it actually apparently was. But you know what? They did that a lot with the heel tag teams in Vince Sr.'s early, before the WWWF, just Capital Wrestling, in, in the Garden in the late 50s and early 60s, because if you look back at it, except for Rocca and Perez, the heel teams were the, the most interesting, and there was a ton of them because they'd cycle them through Rocca and Perez. And then they, they would book them against each other, depending on who was in the territory at the time. Bull Curry and the Sheik. Can you imagine that? With the New York State Athletic Commission at ringside about a year after the riot, they were a tag team. I bet they were on their best behavior up there. But anyway, I wanted to thank our friend John Fell for that wonderful birthday present. Did you see the fact that Lint had to... I don't think they had to do it, I guess, because they're trying to protect their page, but the Wikipedia page for them is on lockdown now. Yes, well, because it got changed a number of times. And, and I don't know how that anybody got the idea they should do a thing like this, but since they fired John Fell back, what was it, a number of years ago? But in such an unfair... A year ago. Yes. Less than no, a year ago. It, no, it was, it was longer than that. No, he said it happened at the end of 2022 in the... January 2023, I thought. No, that was the that was the last time he got fired. I thought that he got fired from Lint years ago. Remember, because they were putting the date in there when he was banned. I, I bet you can find it now if you go to their Wikipedia. <laughs> Somebody else has probably changed it again, but the point people have been changing their Wikipedia, li their Wikipedia, the candy company's Wikipedia to reflect that they banned John Fell as an unsavory individual that never worked for the company again. See, it was funny because at various points, like paragraphs were changed to say like, all these things happened in 2022 plus John Fell in Baltimore was fired. But then my favorite one, the one that got me, was on the side, like on the right side, it has like just basic facts. Yes. <laughs> Headquarters in Switzerland. Key people. Ernst Tanner, executive chairman. Adelbert Lechner, CEO. John Fell, banned. Banned. <laughs> so anyone who went to that page saw him as one of the key people <laughs> in the company. <laughs> Can you imagine what these people in Switzerland thought of all this? <laughs> who is this John Fell? <laughs> who is this and where is he? We must, we must contact him. Pull out of Baltimore. <laughs> Pull out of Baltimore now. We will go to Poland. <laughs> all right. Uh... Well, that's a lot of frivolity for the opening of the program, so let's bring that to a screeching halt. <laughs> 